Hi guys, I think I'm on man. Hello everybody, Sharon Lewin here from School Corridor. And um, as I promised, we're going to speak about procurement and disposal of goods. Um, I must confess my day was so busy that I had very little time really to read up on everything that I wanted to read up on. So um, let me kick um, off the session and just say that we're going to speak about and you see, I'm, I'm not quite ready because they must, but let's try to close the door, yeah. We're going to speak about procurement and we're going to speak about the disposal of goods. And um, I think I need to stress again, like I did in last week's session, that when we speak about, you know, the procurement of goods, goods that you want to obtain, goods that you want to buy, and if you're talking about disposal of goods, you base, there's a financial implication. So we need to talk about your financial policy at your school. Okay, it does touch on financial management. And I thought, oh my word, I was going to uh, still try to get hold of some of my colleagues who are working directly in procurement and, you know, finances, but we, our day was so busy today. <laughs> yeah, so let me start and say, the first thing you need to do is you must read the financial manual that the WCED um, has available for schools. It's on the internet, guys. If you earn the Western Cape, and because it's on the internet, wherever you are, you can just download that financial manual. Okay? And I, Michelle Pinto join. Hi, Michelle. So I'm going to have to know my story today. But that's the first thing I want to tell you. The manual that I'm suggesting that you download, if you don't have it yet, I would imagine most schools would have the um, financial manual from the department. It's called the Basic Financial System for schools manual okay um so then like i said go on the internet and just download it and then i would suggest that you read that manual cover to cover now i'm aware that there's a um a revised manual that is going to be issued i don't know when i've spoken you know a while back to some of my colleagues who work in finances and um, they couldn't really say when the amended uh, financial manual is going to be available but if you study that manual you'll get all the information that you need about the financial management at your school so that is the first bit of homework that i'm giving you and then of course i'll try to reference the manual as i go ahead hi Fiona, thanks for being here all my regulars so nice to have you here in the house um you know, of course, by now that the school governing body has to um, develop policies, right? That is the function, that is the mandate according to the South African Schools Act. You'll find their functions, the HGB's functions in Section 16 of the South African Schools Act. And one of the, um, they are mandated to manage the finances of the school. So that I think most of us know. And then, of course, um, if you check if they must, if the school governing body is in charge of the financial management of the school, then it's the responsibility also of your school um, governing body to, to establish a finance committee. Okay, so I think most schools have finance committees, but your um, so the HGB must establish the finance committee, and then of course, there must be a financial policy that will guide all your financial business at your school and that will help you to control and to manage how things are happening but your when you establish your finance committee they must the SGP is also advised to establish a number of subcommittees okay so you you we're talking about procurement tonight and we're talking about disposal tonight so the SGP is also advised to establish a procurement committee so that committee will then oversee the procurement um, functions at the school. And then one of the subcommittees must also be a disposal um, committee or a disposal board committee. Okay. So your, your finance, you have your main finance committee, but then you must have subcommittees as well. And I'm not sure if schools have so many committees that if you can establish so many committees, but um, most schools will have an LTSM committee. Those uh, That committee will, will oversee the LTSM at the school. And then I think, um, yeah, you'll have a fundraising com uh, committee, subcommittee of your SGP. 
and then you have other committees. But if you read that financial manual that I spoke about, then you'll see that you also have to establish a procurement committee and even a disposal committee. Okay? And then besides that, besides establishing your various subcommittees, and of course you will have a head of those committees, the SGP must also delegate certain financial responsibilities to people. I think this is critical. Okay, so for example, most schools will have a finance officer. Most schools will have a bursa. That is sort of the common uh, financial delegates that you will find at the school. But if you read the manual, you'll see that the manual also says that the SGB must, um, you know, also appoint a petty cash officer at the school. And it's also recommended that you, that you, have a procurement officer at the school. Okay, I want to touch on, um, you know, this the, the latest circular. Now you're going to have to just bear with me. I think the latest circular, the, the circular 40, 43 of 2018, I'm, I'm speaking under the direction of Chick. Yes, circular 43 of 2018. That circular speaks to. Uh, you need to manage furniture and equipment. So that's also a, a very important circular that I think you should read. Okay. Now, those financial delegates or those different financial offices that your finance committee needs to appoint, and those people must be the, they must get the appointment in writing. Okay. I think I spoke about that last week that, Everybody that's given certain responsibilities, certain functions, that must be done in a writing. And then, of course, the SGB must minute that Sharon is going to be the finance officer, Theola is going to be the procurement officer, this, you know, whoever's going to be the stock controller. So all those financial responsible people must get the um, appointments in writing from the SGB, and that must be placed on file. Okay? So, um, what, what the, especially in the Western Cape, there is a lot of emphasis on the internal control mechanisms that schools have. Okay, so you need to segregate the financial duties. Um, let's take, for example, if you 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 have a finance officer and you have a petty cash officer. Now, those two functions can't be can't be filled by one person. You must separate those financial functions. And that is just to help prevent fraud, corruption, mismanagement, you know, just um, anything that's irregular. So there's a strong emphasis on the fact that your financial um, responsibilities or the financial duties must be split um, amongst quite, at least between two or three people. Okay, now that circular, um, I don't think it's the same circular that I've read, because I didn't even have time to record all my information, um, that the one circular um, says that, um, you know, the person who is collecting the money shouldn't also uh, write up the receipts for that money and then do the receipt journal, for example. And it's all a way of just trying to control things. Okay, let me just say hi to people. I could be jumping all over the show, but you must let me know. Um, I did say hi to you. La Miss, La Miss, hi, La Miss. Um, we're becoming like, you know, virtual friends right here. And then Keith, make a joint. Keith, you, you, you're really making an effort to be here. Thanks for being here. And Latifa says, um, hi, Latifa, first of all. Hello, very interesting. Thank you for the information and your time. Thank you to you guys for, for spending time with me. Um, so, yes. So, if I must just summarize what I've said, I said, the, the you know, the read that financial um, manual that is issued by the WCD, it's available on the internet, and then read through the, you know, the responsibilities of your, or your mandate of your SGP. We know the SGP is the, um, you know, has to take responsibility for the finances at the school. The SGP must establish a finance committee. But if you read that manual, you'll see that the, the, the SGP needs to establish a number of subcommittees. 
like your procurement committee. Okay, and then I also mentioned about the segregation of duties, that it's very important that you don't assign to um, duties like the person being the finance officer and the ticket cash officer. Okay, there must be um, some kind of, that, that's sort of a measure of control as well. Okay, um, then, yeah, if, if we talk about the, the procurement of goods, um, in that fun, the financial policy of the school, it the SGB who, de, who develops that financial policy must stipulate how um, goods can be procured. One um, who can approve the monies that will be spent to procure those goods, and um, what are the authority levels, and when do you need what when you do various procurements, okay? Now, I've spoken to some of my colleagues who, who have just recently joined us, and so they've just, they're fresh from the school, and I wanted to know by them, um, when do they, you know, when do they require, according to their policy, quotations? And then my one colleague, Brunelda, said, um, she's, she's um, a principal in Mitchell's Plain. She explained, she said, as a principal, according to the financial policy, as a principal, she can approve a month up to 10,000 um, rand. And I that is the SGP has given her that authority to, um, to spend up to 10,000 rand. And then she doesn't really need a quotation. Yes, she'll get a quotation, but one quotation would be fine and she can purchase based on, on the reputation and the service or whatever. Okay. Then, um, when you spend between ten, more than ten thousand, and less than twenty thousand, then you need three quotations. So you need three quotations from different service prov um, providers, and then people will sit and have a look at those um, quotations, and then determine which one gives the best value. Okay. And then the third step is um, the, in that case the SGP, um, and then those quotations that you receive. When you approve the SGP, you must also then approve the the, the spend of that, that money up to 20,000, okay? And if something costs more than 20,000 rand, then say, to, yeah, between 20, 25,000, I think, Ronald, if you're coming on, you can help me, yeah, um, 25,000 and above, then there should be a tender process. So all that information should be in your financial policy. Okay, even um, your petty cash. Now, um, the, the petty cash amount, I know most schools have the petty cash amount there. Um, in, you know, you may not have it in your financial policy, it may just be understood, or maybe somewhere else. But even your petty cash amount and how you can spend it and when you need to uh, top it up, all that information should be in your financial policy. Okay, so let us sort of just all about the financial policy, but I think it's important, especially when we're talking about procurement, okay? Um, let's see. Walter, thanks for joining us. And Shireen, Shireen is calling Melissa Mentor. Uh, Walter says, I'm late sharing great topic. Yes, I'm sort of just touching on here. Thank you, Walter. Melissa joined us as well. Hi, Melissa. And then Nicole. Nikki, yes, Nikki. This is our Tuesday date. Yeah, thanks for being here. So, so that's very important, right, that you... Um, that the amounts that can be approved by the various, um, say for example, like by the principal or by the SG, um, by the principal, when must the SGP also approve? When do you go over to quotations and when do you go over to a tendering process? Okay, so that kind of tight internal controls help you to um, manage um, your financial processes at the school. Okay. Um, on procurements, right, so that, that legislative or that regulatory framework that we just spoke about will then um, define how you're going to do your procurements. So you can't, people just can't just procure. The other important thing that you need to mention, is, uh, that you need to remember is that you can only make, um, you know, procure goods or services if those services or goods 
are line items in your budget. In other words, you have budgeted for those goods or services. Okay? You can't just procure and say you're following the procedure. The other important um, uh, point is that those procurements, those goods and services that you want to purchase, must be um, budgeted for and obviously it must then have been approved because your budget would have been approved. Okay, so yeah, um, let's see quickly. And uh, because it's Shelly, oh, she's calling Shelly also. Everybody just calling. All right, then let me just see what I wrote down here quickly. Um, I mentioned about that it must be approved. And then, of course, you must have the record keeping must be immaculate. So you must record some, when you do procurements, there must be a requisition. Somebody must make that request. And I tell the person who's making the request, is not supposed to be the same person who's going to approve that request. So you have a different person approving that request. And then, of course, um, once it has been approved, then you can acquire the goods that you want. Okay? I think it's important that there's a lot of emphasis on segregating the financial duties. So if at your school, if you have the person collecting the money, recording the money, and uh, um, uh, receiving the money, and recording the money, then that would um, raise eyebrows, right? So just to protect the people working with the finances and to ensure that your financial management system, processes, and procedures are sound and that nobody's compromised, just ensure that you read that manual and you make sure that you follow those recommendations, okay? Um, yes. Then uh, I spoke about the uh, petty cash. Um, the other point that under um, the, yeah, I think I can move on to disposal of assets because I can't even get to that point. Does that make sense? Is there anything else that I need to mention? Okay, so people can't just buy things. And of course, I did mention last week, we'll speak about how do you go about um, procuring what, how do you start the procuring process? I think the first thing you have to do is you have to identify the needs and obviously those needs would have been captured in your budget because you can't identify the needs here in the middle of the year, right? You do have a contingency in your budget, of, um, uh, a budgetary item there called contingencies, but it can't just be we decided we're going to buy three, four computers now. It must be something that you thought about that you have um, checked uh, to see whether there is a need for it, and that's where your procurement committee comes in, right? And then the procurement committee would have made that recommendation that it be um, part of, becomes part of the budget, and then it would be approved. So your whatever you want to procure must be approved. That's the most important thing, okay? Um, are there questions? Let me see. Are there any questions? No questions? Then I'm going to move on to the disposal of assets okay now with the disposal of, of your of, of, of your goods that you or your furniture or your equipment or old textbooks that you have one is very important that you need to have a disposal board or a disposal committee that your governing body should have established and that should be also recorded in your financial policy Okay, and the recommendation is that it's about three people. Then when you want to dispose of any goods, you must just make sure that, first of all, that you first check, you do a physical check to see whether the goods are really obsolete, whether it's really broken, and whether it really needs to be written off, right? And once you've done that, then you'll have to make sure that, so that, Disposal board must have a committee. First, do the investigation to see once you get the request. Then go and check. You, and then you have a meeting, and then of course you will table all the things that you want to dispose of. Um, what the uh, circulars are very clear on is that you can't dump your, your 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 goods, right? You can't dump it. You can't burn it, and you can request permission to recycle your goods. You might also donate the goods to, say, to other schools, for example. But whatever you're going to dispose of, you must keep a record of that. 
okay? So all those goods that you want to dispose of will be recorded in your stock registers. So when you update your stock um, inventories, then you must write next to that stock item that it has been disposed of, put the date there, and um, indicate where, where the information will be, okay? So those are all technical legal requirements when you want to dispose of goods. Um, of course, you must have a stock register, okay? So everything that's in your stock register, th that register, all your furniture, all your equipment must be, um, must be updated and recorded in those stock registers. And in the WCD, you have an online stock inventory, right? So I think most of the schools know that you have to upload, record all the stock that you have. And then once a year, you get um, they will open that system, and then you will get an opportunity to um, update your stock inventories that are um, currently online on the SEMA system. So if you weren't aware of that, just check with your principal, check with um, whoever's managing that area on, on CMOS. And then um, one, now I'm talking about the CMOS online inventory, right? You have to record all that information. And then um, once a year, they'll open the system. And so if you want to um, dispose of any goods, once you've written off the goods, that information must also be sent to an office. So it must be sent to your office, the equipment um, subdirectorate, and then the that directorate will update your stock inventory. Now that's important because remember every year, um, again, I can't recall the circular, but the, um, every year the schools will have to fill in those forms. There's a certain procedure that schools will have to follow here in the Western Cape. Uh, I think it's O26 forms that you must fill in for the furniture and the equipment, and that you will send your request for any desk that you need, any, you know, cupboards, filing cabinets that you need. You'll put all your, your needs on there, and then that information you'll send to your circuit manager. The district will then compile a list, and they will then draw up a priority list, okay? And then um, you will then be informed whether your, your um, requisition or furniture and equipment have been either approved, the whole, um, you know, um, requisition, the whole request, your entire request has been approved, or it will be partially approved, or your request may even be denied. Okay? And that information you'll get from the district. That is when you have to purchase furniture and equipment, those assets. Um, that circular that um, is now nameless at the moment here, you can, you know, just Google furniture and equipment requisition. That circular also speaks about, um, they, that circular mentions there that schools are advised to use their own income or their norms and standards to purchase furniture and equipment, especially when, when the department is not able to service those needs. Remember, there will be a priority list because we have so many schools, and so you may it may be an urgent need at your school, but you're competing with so many other schools. So that priority list may mean that you fall off the list, and then um, you'll have to wait for the next cycle and then make application again via those official forms. Okay, are there any questions? Let's see. Yes, Michelle says, if you do not have a stock register and you do not know what has been written off our previous printer, what do you do? Oh, that's serious, Michelle. You must have stock registers. So, you, and, 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 and as a new principal, um, you, the one bit of advice I can give you first is inform your circuit manager one, right? Then you have to determine from your, the, the you know, who the stock controller is at the school, um, and then find out if there are records and perhaps, you know, it's kept somewhere. If there are no records whatsoever, like I said, you have to declare that to the circuit manager. And then I would advise you to get your SGB to um, appoint the stock controller. And then you guys will have to start from scratch. But that is a, a legal requirement that all stock must be 
captured in the stock registers. And um, the financial manual also recommends that you appoint a stock controller. So perhaps how that helps. The other important, you know, the other question that comes to mind for me is um, when you did a handover, Michelle, I know you at a new school, there must be a handover process, guys, right? We, especially when you have a new principal, when a new principal um, yeah, starts at the school, then there should be a formal handover process. And that handover process means that all the financial, um, you know, the finances must be declared, all there must be um, a declaration of the, the assets, the stocks that you have, all those things, because you are now responsible for all the stock and the finances at the school. So when you sign that handover certificate, it means you will be able to give an account of what was existing when you came in. So I would advise you, if you didn't have a handover, you know, handover process, that you also speak to your circuit manager. And even if you had a handover process and you're not picking up issues, then I would strongly advise you to, to speak to the circuit manager because that is the person that will be able to support you and guide you through the process. Okay, I hope that helps, Michelle. Um, Adrian has joined us all the way from Saudi Arabia. Hi, Adrian, so now that you're out there, now you can be okay, lovely to have you here. Okay, let me just check. Um, Keith Nika, why all the red tape, Sharon? Why are you still at me? You know, we work for the WCD, there's a lot of red tape involved. It makes one want to hold on to all old stock. Yes. Surely there must be a sharp flight decreed on all goods which can be, then be disposed of at leisure. Does the department even have the capacity to deal with all these declarations regarding disposal of goods? Yes, Keith, you'll be very difficult now. But the one thing is that you look, uh, if you can recall when we talked together, we had our finance committee also operated as the disposal board at the time, right? So you don't have to, there's definitely, um, uh, you know, procedures and processes in place, and that unfortunately we must follow all those prescripts. Then um, once, if your stock registers are um, in place and they're up to date and your inventories are sorted and that's also um, up to date and accurate, then when you write up the goods, Keith, it shouldn't be such a mammoth task, you know, because how, you need to know how much, let's say, how many, computers you have and how many you want to declare as obsolete or unwanted or whatever. So if you have 20 computers, at least that must be on your stock register, right? So if you're going to write up, so it's just a matter of, yes, I, I, it will be a lot of work, but I think if your, if your registers and your inventories are sorted, then it will help to ease this burden that you're talking about here now. I can, I can almost see your face now. Okay, I'll take the helps. Let me know. Jonathan M. Thompson. Hi, Sharon. Joining late. Ah, Jonathan. Yes, nice to have you. Yeah, yes. And Jonathan says it is the O26A and the O26B. Okay, Jonathan, so I was on the right track. <laughs> oh, I remember that today. Right. Okay, Michelle says, uh, Michelle says thanks for that. Okay, so yes, um, Keith, I hope I answered your question. Um, let's just talk about... Um, let me just repeat about the registers, okay? Because I think um, that may be something that's very important. There must be the, the stock registers. You must have that. The stock registers must be up to date. Um, any uh, goods or fun, you know, furniture equipment that you, that you got rid of, that you donated, it must be recorded in your stock register. And if you're in the Western Cape, like I said, you have the online um, inventory facility. So that information must then go to head office and your head office will update it for you. You see, it has an implication because when you do the requisition, thanks Jonathan, on O26A and O26B, then um, when, when the um, district has to draw up that priority list, then um, the district will access the information on our management system. So if you're not if you're not updating your stock registers, you know, then it means that um, 
your stock will, will, will paint a different picture. It, it won't indicate your need. So it's actually essential that you do that. Okay? It's similar to, to um, and, and maybe this may be a silly example, but let's take the um, safety and security issue at the school. We have a system in place here. We, there's a call center safe, um, what's it called? School safety, right? So there's a, call, there's a call center and you can call in and then you must log. So you need to log in all your, your cases where you have drugs or where you have any kind of um, deviant behavior where there are safety risks at your school. So many schools don't phone the call center, right? Gang, gang activity, whatever you have, all those safety hazards. Now, when schools phone in, they say, but you know we're in a high-risk area, you know we have problems at the school. Remember, we also have our records on the side in, at the department. So now uh, the department will call um, our safe schools and, and, and pull the records and say, but uh, school A, according to our records, we have nothing here. You know, according to our records, your school is 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 safe and healthy and everything is running according to plan because you have reported nothing okay so ensure that you make use of those uh, mechanisms you know where there's a communication channel obviously it's official the official communication channel like um if there's an online inventory process <coughs> sorry available for you via seamers make sure that your stock controllers know about that make sure that they're updated and that they just send the information because according to that circular maybe Jonathan you can help me find that circular that circular it is the <coughs> sorry for that it's the responsibility of head office the equipment subdirectorate to um to update your records for you okay so if you're not going to use those official channels kids then that will become a nightmare okay um Yes, okay, let's see. Nothing else? I hear okay, okay. So I spoke about the stock registers and I tried to um, underscore that point um, that you need the stock controller. Of course, you don't need to record all the consumables, right? You don't need to record um, your, your, your floor polish and uh, um, those consumables that you, you know, stationary, um, that you use day to day things. There must be a record of it, but it doesn't have to be in the stock register. And then in your stock register, you must have the furniture and the equipment, of course. And then I spoke about the handing over certificates. That is very, very important. Okay. Um, if you become the new textbook, um, con um, uh, new textbook head, then the, your appointment must be in writing. If and and of course the, the SGP must be notified. So whenever there is a change in uh, portfolios, then that information must be tabled at. The SGB, remember the SGB needs to be informed about who is the responsible persons at school. And I think sometimes schools forget to do that. And I said, you change your finance officer, you change your person, you, 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 you want to establish, you don't have a procurement committee, you want to establish a procurement committee. That should be first tabled at the SGB. The SGB should then approve of that. And then the SGB will have to... Um, amend the financial policy if it's not in the financial policy. We, we need to follow those um, processes, right? Those legal processes. Okay, so I mentioned all that. And then let's see if, I, if I've got anything else. Gosh, I think I've finished saying everything I want to say. Um, that I'm busy looking at all the notes that I just rushed before coming online. Okay, I think I mean yes, I mentioned all the things I needed to mention. Now you can ask me a few questions and then we're gonna have this short and sweet session. Okay, so let's see what what can you advise? How are you according to your financial policy? What is your upper limit for when a principal can approve the spend um to procure goods? Um you know, or services, what and what is your upper um, limit for when the school government body wants to see quotations and when do you, um, you know, embark on a tendering process, if you do, okay? So let's let's hear what you have to say. Keith Nickert says, many thanks for that, Sharon. Our school is super fastidious. Listen to that big word uh, about taking stock, lovely. At a school like ours, you can imagine how extensive that is. 
I was just in the process of making microscopes obsolete. So you can imagine how valuable I'm finding it. Too. Thanks, Keith, my buddy. I told you many years ago. Ah, oh, nice. He's giving me such another compliment. I don't even know what to do now. Um, I told you I'm finding. I told you many years ago that you are destined for bigger things. He's done. Yeah, he's making all now. Thanks, Keith. Yeah, okay. Thanks for being my buddy. And then Michelle says, keep going, sharing your information. It's really helpful. Thanks for that affirmation, guys. Um, Keith and um, Michelle. And then is there anything else? Jonathan, you're quiet now. You just helped me out once. Okay. Give me, give me some guidelines here. Do I shut this down? Because that is sort of what I managed to write down, and, you know, um, after having a hectic day today. Um, did I mention that you may donate, you may make donations, but you need to record the donations as well. Um, and then, of course, in the stock um, registry or in the inventory, you have to, um, you have to mention, you have to record who the beneficiaries are. Okay, maybe I, I don't know if I mentioned that point. And then, yes, yeah, so guide me, guide me, guys. Um, Zaid, I am Zaid, Zaid, you coming at the tail end when I'm busy wrapping up. Okay, listen, let's not, let's not drag this out because nobody's telling me, did I leave, did I cover essential things, just say yay or nay on here, or give me a like, then I know, okay, Sharon, at least you covered the things I wanted to hear, okay, um, yes, I, I, I've mentioned everything I've got here, so give me a, an indication here quickly, what is the tax certificate? 18A. Uh, Michelle, that, um, thanks for the question, that is when somebody makes a donation to your school and they can claim back from the tax man, right? They can get a, a rebate on the donation that is made. So you'll have to issue an, a certificate, an 18A certificate. Let's say somebody's giving you money and um, that person can actually, you know, claim it against his or her tax. Okay, that's yeah, that, that is the 18A. Any other questions? Um, no, did I miss anybody up here? Because sometimes I get these private messages to say, every time I come on, then you don't even say I'm here. So I'm just double checking. Okay. Good night. Michelle answered. Uh, Adrian, anything you want to share with us? Nothing at this point. Okay. Guys, if. Um, yeah, I'm not going to repeat because you can actually watch a replay, but I, I think I underscore that when you do the procurement, um, the actual, that the whatever you want to procure must have been budgeted for, right, to cut out that, um, you know, where people just decide they want to buy things because that would be irregular. And then I, I try to um, emphasize that the best resource you can have is to read through that financial manual um, that has been put together for schools. And then there is one pending, uh, um, an updated version, because most people are going online with their payments and so forth. So if your financial policy didn't accommodate all that, you know, when you're making um, EFTs, then you, the governing body needs to sit and revise that policy. So maybe as my closing statement, I'll just say the following. Um, thanks, Michelle. Um, that have a look at your financial policy or ask your SGB to um, revisit the financial policy and then check to see, one, if um, your fin finance committee has um, all these subcommittees and how can you manage that? Because you don't also want to create so many subcommittees. But for example, the procurement committee, the, the procurement committee, there could also be people within that committee that will see to the disposal but all those things need to be captured in the policy, okay? Um, check also to see if your policy, your financial policy indicates um, the, pro, the um, quotations that you require when you make um, procurements, what the authority levels are and what is the upper um, limit of the, of the finances that can be spent. When do you need quotations? And when do you go into a tendering process? Okay, so just double check your um, financial policy with the governing body, of course, and then also check to see if there is if there's too much power concentrated in one or two persons on your finance committee or subcommittee. Now that I know in the Western Cape, the 
next year, the WCD is coming down heavy on schools in terms of how the financial management has been, you know, done or organized at the school. Okay, so that will sort of sum it up. Um, Adrian, he says, just absorbing this wealth information while washing up your skin. I'm going to do that after this. Okay, guys, so yes, so I think that sort of ends it. I don't see Ashley who asked for all these questions on here. So on that note, I think we're in a nice and short session tonight. Um, let me know if I should tackle anything, you know, what specific aspect I need to tackle next week. Or um, are you going to leave it entirely up to me? Have a super, super Tuesday evening. And thanks for coming in and letting us have this liquor draw, like we say, you know, just enjoying each other's company and sharing information. Okay? So, yes, School Card Odysseys continue to grow, continue to be inspired, and continue to empower yourself and others. On that note, cheerio.